This video is about where to put your legs and feet when making a proper pool stance for tall players. Players who are five foot nine inches or below will find some value here, but most of this video addresses the specific needs of players who are over five feet 10 inches tall. As a six foot five inch tall pool player, I have a lot of experience and have done a lot of experimentation into this topic. Let's dive in. Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. In this video, I will mention other aspects of stance, but the main focus is your legs and feet. Only with a proper lower body stance can you achieve proper alignment of your shoulder, elbow, and head, clearance, the room between your cue stick and your hip, and stability, balance, and a solid foundation for consistent play. I'm a right-handed pool player, but instead of referring to my right hand or foot, I will try to use rear foot and front foot for our left-handed friends. Your rear hand and foot are the side you grip the cue with. Getting into a good pool stance can be uncomfortable at first, especially for taller players. Only you can decide what is a temporary discomfort and what is painful. Please do not hurt yourself. Listen to your doctor and your body. That said, only a few days of practice can change an uncomfortable stance into something that feels normal. Proceed with care. Most instructional materials offer nothing specific for taller players. That changes now. Take a look as a shorter player Jose Perica gets into his stance. Whoa, that was pretty simple, huh? Well, tall players don't have it so easy. It's probably obvious why it's harder for a tall player to make a stance. But let's take a closer look at it to just establish some principles. So I'm six feet five inches tall. This is a standard height pool table. My hips are right here. So my hips are about a foot above the pool table. What if the surface of the table was higher, would that make it easier for a tall person to make a stance? Let's say that the surface of the table was, oh, I don't know, about 15 inches higher. Would that make it easier for a tall person like me to make a stance? Now the surface of the table is here and my hips are below the surface of the table. So what would it take for me to make a stance and play pool on a table that was this tall? Well, all I gotta do is do this, simple. Simple and easy, no strain on my back, no strain on my legs. Very easy to get into a stance that's wide and stable. I can bend my knees, I can bend my back leg however I wanna go. And I can, my cue stick is level to the table. And I, here's the backstroke, here's 90 degrees. And my follow through is hand to chest, which is what I want, I just wanna go like that. Back of the acute comes up and the tip dips down and touches the cloth. And that's a proper follow through. So that's easy to do if the table is this high. But pool tables aren't that high. So if I make the exact same stance and then I put my bridge hand on the table, my cue's way, at way too big of an angle. I'm shooting down into the table. So I have to lower my arm in order to get the cue level. So now what we've got is my upper body from the waist to my shoulders coming up and my upper arm is going down. My elbow is lower than my shoulder. And you can shoot like this and some people have to shoot like this because they can't bend over. But this is your backstroke. This is 90 degrees and that's your follow through. But if you shoot in this posture as a tall person, you need to be aware that this is your stroke and you need to guard against doing this. It's going to be real tempting to do that. I prefer to have my head lower to the table. I want to be able to sight from the cue ball to the object ball, and I want my elbow to be higher than my shoulder so I can have this cue action. Backstroke, 90 degrees, follow through. So in order to do that, I need to get my hips lower. Now what a lot of tall people do, and what I did for a long time, is simply bend my knees like this. Now I'm getting my hips lower. Now my head's at the cue. My elbow is taller than my shoulder. So now I have the proper cue motion. Unfortunately, with my knees like this, it's like a shock absorber. 
and I can bounce and move all over the place. There's no stability here. And what a lot of pool players uh, do, and what I did, was to adopt more of a spread eagle stance where your, your, your feet are really spread wide and shoot like this. The problem is I'm hovering over the cue. My shoulder is well past the shot line. I can't stroke straight without doing some type of a compound motion with my arm to try and, try and get to stroke straight. And it's really difficult to shoot. And also as a spread eagle stance, I'm just not balanced at all. So the challenge is how to make a stance as a tall player given the, the standard height of a pool table today. The challenge is getting the hips low enough to achieve proper alignment, clearance, and stability. Some tall players have success with a bent knee stance, and you have good company. I do not. I strongly prefer a straight rear leg for stability and comfort. And in my opinion, a straight rear leg has become the standard of play today. The tallest top pro pool player that I know of is Ruslan Chinikov. I believe he's about six feet, four inches tall, maybe six foot five. Ironically, his stance is close to textbook and he appears to do nothing to accommodate his long legs. His rear leg is most often straight, though not always. And as you can see, his shoulder is a bit outside of the shot line. My attempts to reproduce Ruslan's stance have ended in failure. I just do not feel stable and my shoulder falls outside of the shot line without constant attention. As much as I respect Russell's straight pool game, I have had no luck trying to imitate his stance. Let's look at our goals, and then I will show you the variations I've tried. So ever since my home table was installed, I have had these strips of green tape on the floor. This one is perfectly aligned with the foot spot of the table and the opposite corner pocket. It is the aim line, and also the shot line, for that shot, since it's a straight-in shot. The other green line is one shoulder width away from the first. The feet location for a textbook stance are about here. Most instructors like the rear foot inside or on the aim line, then the forward foot about one shoulder width over and forward of the rear foot. The rear foot can be below the rear portion of the cue or the grip hand. In my case, I play with a 68 inch long cue. Parallax from the overhead camera angle is deceiving. My foot is actually under the end of the cue stick. Keep this in mind when you look at the overhead camera shots in the upcoming variations. Our goals are alignment. This means the head, shoulder, and elbow should be aligned with the cue stick. The angle of your upper body and the height of your hips have a dramatic effect on your ability to rotate and get your shoulder behind your head. In my experience, this is one of the most difficult parts of proper alignment for a tall pool player. Clearance. Clearance means there is adequate space between your cue stick and hip to move the cue freely without any stroke defects from trying to get around your hip. And stability. Many instructors will make a stance, ask you to push on their shoulder and say, see, I'm balanced. Well, certainly your feet need to be far enough apart to be solid in the lateral direction. But in my opinion, stability along the aim line is even more important. When you pull your cue back on the backstroke, some momentum is transferred to your body towards the rear foot. And especially when you stroke your cue stick forward, momentum is transferred into your bridge hand and can cause head movement. A stable stance is solid enough to keep the head and upper body still during these changes in momentum of your cue stick. For many months, I played like you see in this picture with my rear foot far back before resolving to find my best stance. The next 18 examples catalog this journey. I've learned that small changes in foot placement can make a huge difference. We'll go through them quickly, and then I'll explain my current stance and shot entry. We'll look at six different positions for the rear foot in combination with three different positions for the front foot. Each of the three images, the overhead, side view, and front view, were all taken at the same instant. The yellow footprints show my feet position. The green lines reproduce the green tape on the floor and also indicate the end of the cue, my forward foot position and front leg angle, and my hip position. This was my stance for many months. My right foot is far back, and the foot is 90 degrees to the aim line. This helps my hips lower and achieve some pretty good alignment. 
But there are two problems. First, my rear ankle can bend backwards, so I don't have good stability. And secondly, the front leg is angled slightly forward, and that's because most of the weight of my body is on the front foot. So when I stroke my cue forward, the rear foot can become unweighted and actually shift that way. And this can also lead to wanting to raise the head up. Shifting the front foot forward helps with the balance some, but then with more weight on my rear foot, my rear ankle is even more likely to collapse. And stretching this way is never going to be comfortable. Moving my forward foot wider instead of farther forward didn't help either. Angling my rear foot forward helps the stability some, but there's still too much weight on my forward foot. With my forward foot stepped forward, I feel very stretched out and unbalanced. The same with my forward foot to the side, which is also hard to enter. So I tried keeping my rear foot under my grip hand, my hips a little bit higher, and as a result, my shoulder peeks out from behind my head. By stepping farther forward with my forward foot, my shin is at an angle leaning back, which is good for balance, but my hips are still too high and my shoulder's in the wrong place. Coincidentally, bending your rear knee from this position results in the what I call running man stance, which you see in some of the top pros. But again, I think shoulder position is an issue here, especially if you're extra tall like me. And I found no benefit to moving the forward foot wide. Next, I wondered if moving my rear foot outside of the aim line would be okay. I still have good clearance because I have such long legs. Unfortunately, the shoulder's in the wrong position. The alignment just doesn't work. Stepping forward with my forward foot helps with balance, but doesn't do anything for alignment. And stepping wider is even worse for alignment. Moving the rear foot back and outside of the aim line, I still have good clearance, but too much of my weight is shifted onto the forward foot again, and my body is angled a little bit more towards the aim line, so alignment isn't right. Moving my forward foot forward is way too much of a stretch, and moving my forward foot wide is about the same. And finally, rather than having my rear foot under my grip, or farther back, or outside the aim line, how about if my toes are underneath the end of the cue? This is actually pretty close to textbook, and I'm trying to angle my rear foot a little bit forward so that my ankle doesn't uh, collapse under the weight. You can tell that the forward shin is vertical. I still, in this stance, have too much weight on the forward foot. Moving my forward foot wider doesn't help with the balance issue. Moving my forward foot forward, however, does help with the balance issue. My weight is now evenly distributed between the forward and rear foot. And although my hips aren't quite as low as I really wanted, and as low as I can get them by moving my rear foot way back, this is very close to optimal position and very close to the stance that I'm using today. In order to demonstrate my pool stance as a tall pool player, I need to talk a bit about shot entry. Now, shot entry is a topic for a whole other video, so I'm just going to touch on a couple quick aspects. The most important thing is that your shot entry or how you enter into your stance always begins with your rear foot. And in my case, that's my right foot. So what I do is I stand a cue length away from the cue ball with my body centered on the cue stick. And the most important part is that your head is centered on the cue stick. Once you begin your, your shot entry, your head should never leave that aim line. So to enter your stance, you can do a one-step, a two-step, or a three-step. And I do a two-step, so I'll mention that first. So once I'm standing behind the shot, my feet are equally um, on each side of the aim line and spread apart a little bit so that I have room to do the one step, the first step, which is to put my rear foot into position, and that's with my toes be below the end of the cue and my foot angled forward. So that's step one. From this position is step one. Step two is to put my forward foot into position. And for me, as we saw in the example, that's forward at the end of that green tape. So I would step forward. Now, I'm, most of my weight is on the forward foot. So the final part of getting into my stance is I put, locate my bridge as I shift my weight back to my rear foot so that my weight is balanced from front to rear foot. So that looks like this. Now a player who does a one step, when they stand behind their cue, they'll have their right foot in position already. I don't prefer that because it means you kind of got to lean to the side. Now I used to do a three step stance, which is rear foot, forward foot, and then I would slide my right foot back farther. So that would be the third foot movement. 
You want your shot entry to be as simple as you can make it so it can be very automatic and very repeatable by your subconscious. So for me, my grip hand, by the way, is in the right position already for the shot. And it's simply one, two, and then kind of like an archer stretching out, my bridge hand goes forward as my weight shifts back. And then I'm ready to shoot. So at this point, I have the weight evenly distributed from front to front and rear, front and rear foot. I'm stable in a lateral direction. And most especially with both to toes pointed forward, my forward foot is more forward than my right, but both of them are pointed more forward. And that gives me stability in this direction. So when I'm swinging my cue, my upper body doesn't move at all, especially when I do my follow through. So my rear foot stays weighted, my head doesn't move, and this I've found for a very tall player like myself is a good compromise. Rather than trying to get my hips as low as possible like this, which results in an unbalanced stance, or keeping my feet under me the way Russell and Chinakov does, and being in a very tall stance, I think this is a good middle ground. And remember, I'm six feet five. So foot under the end of the cue, step forward, far forward, and then the weight shifts back as the bridge hand comes forward. Remember when I said that the most important part of your shot entry is leading with your rear foot? There's a very important reason why, especially for tall players. I'm going to move the cue ball farther out, maybe into the middle of the table. Because as a tall player, it's very easy for me to make a stance and reach that cue ball that's a, a past halfway across the table. Because I can do that, I will. The danger is that you don't get the rotation of your shoulders correct. So when you're making your, your normal stance, and we're practicing our stance, which we shoot at least 50% of the time, I'll get into my stance, and you want to make sure that you're making a memory, an imprint of what this feels like. And when I say this, I'm referring to the rotation of my shoulders. I need my right shoulder behind my head and my elbow in line. So you need to remember your upper body position. The reason why is when you go to reach a ball that's farther uh, across the table, now my cue sticks up here. So now I'm putting my left foot, my right, my rear foot into position, and then I go to step forward with my forward foot, oh, and I hit the table. So I can't make a stance, a normal stance. So a lot of my stances involve my forward uh, thigh resting against the apron of the table and then I get into my stance. Well, if you don't lead with your forward foot, you're going to end up with a spread eagle stance and your forward foot against the table and then when you get into your stance, your shoulder is well over the shot line. So this is something that us tall players have to guard against. When you're reaching across the table or when you're, whenever you're making a stance where you can't get your foot into the normal position, you have to make sure that you lead with your forward foot. So every stance you lead with your forward foot. The reason why, that gets my upper body into position. So now I can't go as far forward. So whatever I do to compromise my left, my forward foot, doesn't matter because my upper body position is dictated by the location of my rear foot. So now, maybe I'll step on the other side of the table here with my forward foot. So my, my lower body is compromised. But because I'm starting with my rear foot in the correct position, when I get down with my bridge at the ball, my upper body rotation is identical to, it is, uh, to where it is on a normal uh, stance. Even if you're six foot five, just like me, you might have slightly different needs or preferences. Or maybe you're six foot eight, or six foot two, or five foot eleven. Everyone's going to have slightly different needs. And maybe you're younger than me and you're more flexible. And, and the stretched out position is better for you. What's important is that you, is not that you try to duplicate exactly what I do. Remember the three most important aspects of stance. Alignment, clearance, and stability. If you pay attention to those three things, 
even as a tall player, you're going to find the optimal stance to be able to play great pool.